Hey guys and welcome to Knicker. In today's video, we're going to go over how to make this basic Luna. I'm calling them the Chibi or the Squish Luna. They're pretty cute. This one's got a little bit of a mark right there, but it's an adorable little pattern. I'm going to show you how to do the body, how I make the head and attach it, and how I also do the arms. I'm also going to show how to do a little bit of a French knot towards the end, which I use for a belly button. Uh, I'm going to be using this as a base video on how to make a bunch of other Luna squishes. So this is a unicorn that I'm going to be making, and this is a bunny. I'm going to be doing this base body because that is the same pattern that I used for the bunny and for the unicorn. So stay tuned for those videos because I'm going to be posting those hopefully fairly quickly after this one. But this one's going to be the big one that is a pain in the butt because it is the big one that shows how to do the body generally. So the other ones will be like added on how to make the ears and how to make the face and how to make it look like a bunny and how to make this one have the horn and how to do the little hair pieces and how to make its little snout. Things like that and how to change it. I'm also working on a bear but he's not quite done yet. I have a Luna bear pattern already done and I've already got a nose. I just haven't done all that. I'm also making a bat which is actually a custom request. I do those on occasion. So without further ado, oh, and before I forget, um, the pattern for this will be down in the description down below. Um, this video, I'm giving a warning right now, I'm going to be a bit more rambly than usual because quarantine is actually starting to get to me. So without further ado, let's get started. So for this pattern, you will need some worsted weight yarn, whatever colors you're doing. I'm gonna be showing how to do other variants of this body and how I can turn it into all kinds of different things like the unicorn and bunny and bears and oh my. So I'm gonna be showing how to do all kinds of stuff when it comes to the this body. So whatever colors you wanna do, whatever their variants, I've got pictures on my Instagram if you wanna see how they look over there, that's cool. Uh, in today's video, I'm gonna be using the off white color in Red Heart Soft. And I'm pretty happy with this yarn. I find that it is plushy and soft, but it looks really nice at the same time. Um, we are also going to be using size uh, D3 US or 3.25 millimeter crochet hook. I am using a Susan Bates because I like the inlay crochet hooks more. They've got a bit more of a point to them. I like those a bit more. You're also going to need, as long as I'm flying everything everywhere, a darning needle. You're going to need some polyfill. Uh, this will probably be, be about half a pound ish. Ish. Um, if you get a pound bag, that'll definitely be enough to do at least one to two of these. You're also going to need some eyes. I am using 20 millimeters eyes that are safety eyes. I got these right off of Amazon. I'm going to leave a link for where I got these in bulk on Amazon. Um, you might be able to come across some at a Hobby Lobby or a Joann's. That's what I've got local to me. Maybe even a Michael's if that's what you have. If you are able to get to one that is open or doing curbside pickup or anything like that. So that's pretty much what I'm going to be using. You could also just use straight up buttons or do some kind of embroidery with your eyes. All right, let's get started. I went and made some tea. All right, let's get started. We are going to take our yarn that is now apparently exploding everywhere. Anyway, we are going to take that and we are going to create a slip knot. After putting some of this back inside the bowl. There we go. So our slip knot is by basically taking our tail, putting it over our working yarn, and then picking up our tail and pulling it through. I have a more in-depth video on how to do this that will be linked down below in my doobly-doo or description. Um, but for now, you're going to want to be comfortable with chaining, with working in the round, single crocheting, increasing and decreasing in order to do this pattern, basically. So you're also going to want to know how to do a magic ring. I'm going to show you how I do mine. It's just going to be like a loose interpretation of it, basically. It's not the actual method of making a magic ring. It's just like my cheap imitation of it. And it works. And because I've got dyslexic brain, it just, you know... It's what I learned, it's what I got to work, so that's what stuck. All right, so we're going to create a slip knot. If you need, again, tutorials down below for more basic things. My magic ring is essentially chaining one and then chaining two. So I've got one, two chains, 
and I'm going to go back inside this first chain and that's going to be my ring. So let's go back inside here and then single crochet one. I'm actually going to place six single crochet inside my initial uh, ring. Actually, no, I'm going to put five. Sorry. I'm putting five single crochet inside because this is not my normal. This is my leg. I forgot about that. This is not like the arm where this is actually six. This is five. We are doing five single crochet inside of our initial ring. One, two, three, four, and five. And if at any point you get confused, I have a written pattern down below linked in the doobly-doo on Ravelry. Uh, I can email you if, if you'd like. I'm actually editing on my phone right now, which is making it really hard for me to be able to do anything really <laughs> for editing wise. So I'm not able to post the pattern like I usually do. Um, so there's that. So I've got one, two, three, four, and five stitches right there. And I'm going to increase every single one of these stitches. And I'm going to turn my five stitches into 10. So we are done with round one. And we are now going on to round two. The pattern that I have linked on Ravelry will actually also have charts on there. So if you get confused and you're more of a charts person, I know I am. I'm a video on charts. I'm a very visual, I have to see it kind of learner. So. There's that. We're going to put our hook back inside the first one and place one single crochet and then go back inside that same stitch and put two. We're going to do that all the way around. So one and two. One and two. So this is six stitches into our second round. Seven and eight. And then nine and ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Here, I like to kind of pull up my stitch a little bit right there for a second, put my hook inside the stitch I just went into, and take my tail, and I like to kind of just pull that through that loop and not split my yarn, preferably. This is what I use as a stitch marker which I like instead of other stitch markers, which I end up losing and they end up everywhere. Let me put this over here a little bit so it doesn't look like it goes with that as much. All right, this third round, we are now going to single crochet one, increase, single crochet one, increase the entire time around. We're gonna be going from 10 stitches to 15 stitches and that will include how many we do for increasing. So this will be our last increasing round for the little leg. So one, Let's try not to go too far off. There you go. Two. One. And two. One. And two. And one. And increase. one and two and that is it I believe you can see because the tail now is in line with our next round here we are going to take our tail and we are going to pull that through again and now we are going to single crochet around for three rounds I'm going to count real quick one two three four five six seven eight 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. We have 15 stitches. And now we're going to single crochet around for three rounds. So that's 45 stitches. And I think I'm just going to do that off camera real quick. So be right back. All right. So I just went around three times. You can tell because from the tail, it's one, two, three. We have three rows right there. And now I have, you're going to want to do this twice. So the first time you do it, you're going to slip stitch off and you're going to leave a nice long tail, leave a nice long tail. And then the second time you're not going to cast a uh, fasten off. You're going to keep this attached. And some of you will also have noticed that when I single crochet, I'm only going through the front loop. 
I'm not going through both loops. That's just my preference. I find that it makes the stitch look a bit more bubbly and it goes with the amigurumi a bit more versus uh, what it looks like when I go through both. But if you feel comfortable going through both and that's just what you wanna do, it's not gonna really change the overall look of it too, too much. All right, so from here, you're still attached. You've made your second leg. The first one's over here, just chilling out. And you're going to chain nine. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. We have nine chains now, and what we're going to do is we're going to attach it to our second leg. We're gonna have a lot of strings going on, it's just a matter of trying to keep it all sorted. And my cat laid on my thing, and it's really noticeable because of the white yarn. Anyway. What I like to do is here, I like going through both the top, you can get that on screen. I like to go through both the top of the stitch and right underneath, I like to go underneath where I fastened off and I like to kind of do a quick single crochet. I work with my tail as a part of the yarn and I work with that until I get to the side where my side is gonna be the new start of my row, if that makes sense. So I'm going to single crochet inside that one. We are now attached. This is just kind of hanging out, doing its thing. And we're going to act as if our tail is a part of the yarn. And what I mean by that is I'm going to kind of hold it in line with my stitches and I'm going to wrap around them. So I'm going to do that for seven stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. So now I pull my tail so that it is nice and straight. I'm going to take my tail and kind of just let it be over there, basically. I'm not working with it anymore. I'm just gonna let it lay to the back of those last seven stitches and I'm going to do seven more stitches. So I single crocheted into the very last stitch right there and then I did seven stitches. So we're at eight that are taken up on here. We've done eight stitches and we're now going to go across these next seven ones stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, there we go, and seven. You'll notice right here there's kind of a half a stitch but it's basically where you started chaining around. What I like to do here in order to create a seamless line is I'm going to go inside that little loop. I'm then going to go up into the chain, one of the first, well, I guess technically it's the ninth stitch where I just attached, and I'm going to slip into that and then I'm gonna just do a little single crochet, like so. Now I'm going to go through the backs of the stitches of these chains. So these little bumps right here, bump here, bump here, bump here, I'm going through the center, two, three, Four, all nine of them. Five, six, seven, eight. And on the ninth chain, I do the same thing on this side essentially, where I take this chain and then I go through the underside of the next where the chains kind of were attaching. I find that this makes it so that there's not a hole. Um, if you're not comfortable doing this, then, you know, figure out your own ways of doing these kinds of things. It's whatever you're comfortable with. And I'm gonna just single crochet that way. And now I'm going to single crochet across 15 and then go through the backs of the loops on the previous side. So you'll see that there's loops on the other side as soon as we get there. So we're going to just do one, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. There we go. 14 and 15. We are now going to kind of eyeball where our chains were. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, excuse me. One, two, three. It's right there, kind of tucked up in there, right there. We're gonna go inside the back chain of each of the nine chains that we just created earlier. One, go back inside two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and last but not least, nine. We are then going to go across eight stitches back into the very first one that we created. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And now this is basically the start of um, when I go and can count route, uh, when I go and count rows from now on, basically this is what I'm gonna count as my start. That's why I had you hold your tail until you got to there because now I'm able to just pull my tail through the center of that stitch and not split it. There we go. If I kept on pulling, I would have split it. And now we're going to be counting from, that's technically row seven is what I'm gonna count it as because these were rows one through six for each foot. And so this is technically row seven on both of those. So we're gonna count, this is row seven. You should now have an active number of 48 stitches because 15 and 15 are 30. And then you doubled your nine stitches. So that's 18. So 18 plus 30 is your 48. You should have 48 stitches. We are going to single crochet around once more. And then I'm gonna show you how I do my decreasing along the sides. I'll be right back. All right, so basically I'm going to go around. I realize that it might be a little confusing if I don't show that I'm actually going over the chains like normal. We're just going to single crochet around the entire piece and it all should be one fluid. It should be easy and smooth now. We're not going into any chains. We're not going into any kind of weirdness. As you can see now the single crochets, this nice little cross piece here has gone across and there's no holes. That's why I went through the double stitches like I did. And we're gonna keep going around like so. As I try to go off camera, I always do that. And I've got a nice wide screen this time. <laughs> I always wanted to be like, ah, over here. No, bad, all right. Eh! Oh, I'm losing stitches now. So we're gonna just keep going around and around and around. Oh, I'm hitting that with my knee. I'm like, what is that noise? It's because I'm hitting one of the mini knit crates that I have over on the side of my desk that I need to review, but I have not been able to do that. So they're also delayed on their doing their knit crates this month, which, you know, understandable. Quarantine, they're trying really hard. I remember what, reading one of their posts and they were talking about it. So I'm excited to get my knit crate regardless. I actually just got something in the mail called Furl's Crochet. I got their quarantine kit and I'm gonna be doing a uh, review on that. They have this beautiful crochet hook. I totally went into it so that I could actually like, you know, try out the crochet hook before I did the review. So I don't know, I'm pretty excited about it. I'm filling in time because I still need to go around all across this entire thing. All right, so I have gone around once more and i actually went 22 stitches further through row nine is what i'm calling it so that i can get to this side and the way that we're doing decreases is i'm going to explain it right over here so we are currently at 48 stitches right i'm going to put his head right there oh that's perfect he like no he does not he won't lay 
There we go. All right, so we are at currently here, row nine. We just went across to here, and this is our first decrease side. We are going to go from row nine and decrease two along right here. And then the next round, we're just going to sink crochet around like normal. The next round, we're going to go from 46 to 44, and then end single crochet around, 42, single crochet around, 40, single crochet around, 38, round, 36, round, 34, round, 32, round, and then 30. And then once we get to 30 stitches, we're going to do a major decrease round, which I'll show you how we go about doing that. But I'll show you exactly what I mean by decreasing his little hip area. So I am now on row nine. I had gone around once already. Technically I've gone around twice, but I'm at 48 stitches and I'm currently on row nine and I'm going to go over here and I'm going to go across, single crochet 22. We're going to now go into the 23rd and the 24th stitch. Going to, this is how I do an invisible decrease. I actually go through the first one and then I go through the second one, both at the same time. And then I pull my yarn through that, through both of them. And then I pull it through like a normal single crochet. And now I'm going to just do 22 stitches again. So one, two, three, be right back. <laughs> All right, so I've gone across 22 again, and now we are going to do our decrease again. So we're going to go one, e no, two, there we go, into both. And then we're going to slip our yarn through that and then slip again. This is going to continue on and I'm gonna single crochet around once and then the next round I'm gonna decrease, single crochet once, decrease, and I'm gonna keep going uh, until I have reached the point where I am at 30 stitches around. I'll meet you once I'm about halfway through there just to kind of give you an update on where I am with this little guy. Be right back. All right, so we are currently on row 19 of this pattern. We are at 36 stitches right here. Um, I am still going along um, and I'm going to put that aside for right now. I just wanted to give a reference point on where we were in the pattern. Um, I am currently here. We are on row 19. We have 36 stitches on after decreasing. So I did the decrease single crochet around, decrease around, decrease, single crochet around, decrease, so on and so forth from 48 stitches down to 36. And at this point, it's starting to get a little bit closed off. So I like to stuff the legs um, when I'm about here and I like to stuff the very bottom and then I close off um, doing the getting to the 30 stitches. And then from 30 stitches, we're gonna go down to 24 really quickly all within one round so i'll show you how to do that after i stuff and after i go around and get to 30 stitches so i'm going to keep going around i'm going to stuff real quick this is just where i like to stuff i know i'm being a little you know overly explanatory but i'm just trying to you know explain so i'm going to stuff his little legs real quick i like to a keep any kind of tails that i have and i tend to put those on the bottom of the feet I'm rolling up. That's what that sound is. There you go. I'm going to tuck it and kind of push it as far as I can along the bottom. I also like to push my yarn, my polyfill along the sides like so, so that I don't get weird lumps. All right. So I'm going to stuff and I'll be right back as soon as I stuff and I get from 36 to 30. Be right back. Before I go on after this, I just wanted to show how I had stuffed it. It's not super firm yet because I'm still gonna go around a little bit, but I just, I find it's easier to go around and finish stuffing if I've gotten the bottom of it done before I go down the second half of this. So I'm gonna go from row 19 and on. I'm gonna be going from 36 stitches back down to 30 stitches, maybe not back down, but down to 30 stitches. And we're essentially gonna be doing this portion of the body now. We're gonna keep going down and down and down. Every other round, I'm decreasing two along the side. 
So I'm going to get to 30 stitches and then I'll show you how I do my decreasing round to get my 30 stitches here down to 24 stitches. All right, be right back. All right, so I've changed to a different uh, tripod. So this is a little bit higher up. I actually think I like this height more because I think it shows it's a little bit easier to show. I made some tea and we are currently at 30 stitches. I just did my decrease round, which means I'm going to single crochet around once more. This is my last decrease as far as going up the side of the body and doing two uh, decreases, one along each side every other round, which is going to take us from 48 down to 30. We are now going to go around once and just single crochet around. So one, two, three, four, three. not splitting yarn, five, six, and what I like about this pattern is it's very easy to mold this little body into whatever you want. Uh, my mom, who's a little bit of a horror fanatic, actually mentioned that the little guy here kind of looks like a chibi, cute version of Sam from Trick or Treat. So actually around Halloween, I might actually make a Sam using the same body from Trick or Treat. Um, and I think that that would be really cute. I'm also thinking about doing some Animal Crossing characters and instead of doing like the baby Luna body that I've been doing for a lot of these Amigurumis, doing it with this chibi body, maybe even doing the Five Nights at Freddy's, I'm not sure. Uh, that is my decrease right there, so I'm gonna go over it. I don't know, this has a lot of options and a lot of ways that you can play around with this and turn it into something adorable. So I'm pretty excited about that. Um, we're just gonna keep going around. I find that the spring is making my voice very hoarse. I'm not actually going out and about, so I know I'm not like getting sick or anything like that, but like it's just spring and I get very, very dry during the spring for reasons unknown. You'd think that it'd be the winter, but no, it is not. And we're almost there. That's why I don't show this the entire way up because otherwise, otherwise you would just have me like chatting up a storm. We got two more stitches. I'm a very chatty person. There we go. So we're on the last stitch right there. This is where my, my row marker is right here. So what we're going to do next is we're going to go from 30 stitches to 24. We're going to do that by decreasing six stitches evenly across those 30 stitches. So we're going to single crochet three initially. If I can get in there, there we go. One, two, and I'm gonna go a little slower here, and three, and then I'm doing the same thing with decreasing. We're gonna go into the fourth and fifth stitch, and we're gonna decrease. We're gonna do that the entire way around, um, except for the very last one, which I will skip and slip, and I'll show you how I do that. So that's one, two, three, four, and five. One, as long as I don't leave my yarn. I'm gonna split my yarn. It's, it's harder to show this as it gets bigger. <laughs> That's why I put my tripod a little bit higher too. One, two, you can kind of, it's an invisible decrease, but you can kind of see where it is a little bit right there. One, two, and three. Going into the fourth and fifth stitch right there. One, two, three, four, and five. Going through both. One, two, three, four, and five. Going through both. And this last one, I'm gonna go one, two, three. One, not shake my tripod. Two, and three. And instead of decreasing these two stitches together, I'm going to skip this stitch and slip stitch into the next one. So it'll still decrease it to 24, but I'm going to slip stitch and then do a quick little chain. We're going to leave a very long tail. I like to leave like at least 16 inches just because I would way rather have way too much excess just chilling out rather than not nearly. Apparently I can't do this when I'm looking just through the, the screen up there. So 
I'd rather have it be way too long and cut it than way too short. So I'm gonna pull my tail through. I made it obscenely long. And what I also like to do is I like to take my tail and I like to put my hook underneath where I just slipped onto. And I'm going to pull my tail underneath. I find that it makes it a little bit smoother. I tug it a little bit and that smooths the line. Smooths just a tad bit. And I still have more stuffing to do. I'm gonna do that before I add the head. I'm gonna show you how I do the head first though. Coming right up. I'm also gonna cut this down. Be right back. All right, so now we're going to go on to the head portion of the pattern. And essentially, we're gonna do what I do in my introductory amigurumi ball tutorial, which will be linked down below, in that I'm going to crochet six inside of a magical ring, increase to 12, then increase to 18, increase to 24, increase to 30, and then 36. And now I'm going to increase from 36 to 42 and from 42 to 48. I am doing this slowly and incrementally. That way it'll, you know, look good. We are now going to single crochet one, two, three, four, five. And then on the sixth stitch, we are going to increase. So one, and then going back inside the same stitch, two. We're going to do this the entire way around. Two, three, four, five. There we go. Six, increase by putting one and two inside the same little hole here. One, I have my bowl finally. I never remember to bring my bowl for my crocheting. Three, four, five, six, and seven. So seven times six is 42. That's why I kind of count it that way. I kind of multiply in my head as I go. I'm very good at multiples of six now. Three, four, five, six, and seven, and one, two, three, four, five, six, and increase to seven, one, this is our last one, two, three, four, five, and then six, increased into seven. I'm gonna take my tail, I'm gonna move it. I move my tail every single row just so that I can keep track of it just like I did earlier with my feet. When I was doing my increases there, and now we are going to do seven single crochet. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Seven and eight. We're gonna do that the entire way around. One, two, three, four, Five, six, and seven, into eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. One, two, I hit my finger the wrong way with the hook. Three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. We're two more and then we are done with our increases for the head. Two, three, four, Five, 
six, seven, and eight. And on our last increase, one, two, three, four, five, six, eek, there we go, and seven, and eight. We're gonna move our tail one more time, going inside and moving that tail. And now we are going to single crochet around for 12 rounds. We're gonna go around 12 times. That's going to add the length, our head, we're about right around, oh, where's my increase? My last increase, it's kind of hard to tell. I believe it's right there, there we go. That's our last increase. So now we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And then I'm gonna do a couple decreases so that we can get the 48 stitches here down to 24 so that the neck will match up with the body, if that makes sense. But I will show you how I go about those decreases after we go around 12 times. I'm not going to show you 12 times because that gets really repetitive, but we're going to go around for 12 rounds. Be right back. All right, so now I have gone around 12 times. If you hear any weird noises, it's people talking outside. We're into the next day, but I have now gone around 12 times. So there's that. Before I forget, I'm going to do my eyes. I have 20 millimeter eyes that I got in bulk over on Amazon. You can get like 100 pairs for, I think it was less than $20, but I was pretty happy with that. What I do for these eyes, and this will vary based on your amigurumi and where you want to place your eyes and what look you're going for. But generally, I like to go halfway through my 12 stitches. So I go one, two, four, six, this is the halfway point, two, four, and six, six. And I like to kind of find a middle point here. Ah, no. Oh, I'm on the wrong side. There we go. <laughs> I go on the opposite side. I'm like, why does it say 13? It's because I'm looking at it on the opposite side. Two, four, and six. I'm going from the side where the where I'm going across still with my stitches. I'm gonna go two, four, and six. I'm gonna place it right around there. Kinda working that in there. I have caught on some of the stitches there, but I got it through. I'm gonna not put my back on yet until I'm sure that's where I wanna place my eyes. I'm going to count to 12. I do these out 12. 10 to 12 stitches apart, depending on how it looks and whether or not my eyes are going in the right place. People are noisy outside. Two, four, six, going across. I'm gonna put it there, but I'm also gonna count and make sure that that's about right. Two, four, six, eight. That's about 10 stitches if you count the one underneath. So that's about 10 stitches apart. You can go further apart, you can go wider apart. Keep in mind that when you stuff, these eyes are going to kind of spread out a little bit because you're going to be pushing against the fabric there. I'm happy with how those eyes look, so I'm going to put my backings on. These are a little cheap backings, but they work and they're not a pain in the butt to put on, which I know means that they're not quite as sturdy to be on, but they work for what I'm doing with this. So now we are going to do some decreasing. We are going to go from our 48 stitches here. Oh no. We're going to go from our 48 stitches. I'm going to go back to that stitch right there. Sorry, that was the last stitch and I just accidentally let it go. All right, we're going to be going from 48 stitches down to 24. We're essentially closing down this way and going into our neck. We're going to be attaching the 24 stitches from this head onto this neck body, essentially is what we're doing. We're going to be doing the inverse of how we increased. So in order to... Buddy, you need to not keep falling down. There we go. In order to decrease, we were uh, increasing our last increase row on the seventh stitch into an eighth stitch. So we're gonna take that same idea. We're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, 
And then on our seventh and eighth stitch, seven and eight, same decreasing method that we used for our body. We're gonna take our seventh and our eighth stitch and turn it back into just one stitch. So that'll bring us from 48 to 42 stitches all the way around. One, two, I'll show that one more time. Three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. I'm gonna finish going around. All right, so we, I'm showing this just for reference. We just did 48 stitches down to 42, so we were on row 21. We are now on row 22 in reference of the pattern. I also need to delete that little dot, but that's neither here nor there. I will fix that before we post this on Ravelry. All right, I'm gonna put my pattern right over here and I'm going to show you how I do that. So I just did my seventh and eighth stitch together. So now I'm going to single crochet five. So one, two, three, four, five, and then six, as long as I can get in there, and seven together. I'm gonna show that one more time and then I'll just finish out the round and then I'll show you what to do with the next round. So we are now on round 22 again. One, two, three, four, five, and then six and seven together. Be right back. We just finished on round 22. We are now gonna be going on to 23, going from 36 stitches, which is what we currently have, down to 30. The way that we do this is we're going to go one, two, three, four, and then five and six go together. Again, skipping here, going into the next stitch because that's what we just decreased. One, not splitting our yarn, hopefully. Two, three, four, and then five and six. The next decrease round will be our last decrease round. Two, three, four, five and six. So I'm using my tail as a marker for when my row ends. I also realized that when I was showing the pattern, this is not right because I actually stop and slip stitch off after row 24 at the 24 stitch mark. This was an old pattern that I had put on here. So ignore this part of the pattern. It will be corrected in the final product. This is just a draft of what I generally put my thoughts down. And I have the like charts and all that stuff with it as well. I don't know, it's a general layout. You want it to look like that essentially, what this picture is showing, which I will be showing on here as well. So we are finishing off with row 24 and we're gonna be decreasing from 30 stitches, which is what we have right now, down to 24. We are going to single crochet one, two, three, and then putting our fourth and fifth stitch together the entire time around. And we're doing something different on the very last decrease. One, two, I'm kind of doing what I did with the body top there. I like to slip stitch off. Two, three, four, and five. I find that it makes it easier to sew it on. And I'm not doing any stuffing until after I've slip stitched off. So not quite yet. Two, three, four, and five together. One, two. I split my yarn. Look at that. I went through the three of the four loops. Where was I? Oh yeah, oops, okay. So that was four and five together. One, not split this time. Two, three, four and five. 
guess that is the downside to the Bates yarn in that it has a deeper groove and it's got a pointier edge. It is easier to get into your stitches, but it is also way easier to split your yarn. One, two, three. This is our last decrease for what I'm going to do, and then I'll show you what I do to do my last real increase. Decrease, there I go. So one, two, three, four, five together, and then I do one, two, three. I skip the next stitch and then I slip stitch into the last stitch of that round. And then I do a quick little chain one. I'm going to not make an insanely long tail for this one. I'm gonna pull it through though. And then I'm gonna do the same thing where I take my hook and I go underneath and then I kind of just pull that through. That way it looks a bit more smooth. I pull on it just a little bit and I'm going to go stuff my head. I'm gonna go stuff my body a little bit more. I'm doing the same thing where I kind of push it towards the sides and towards the top and then I focus on the center. Um, and I'm gonna stuff my body just a little bit more and then I'll show you how I sew. Um, I have found a newer way of doing it where I basically go through both loops and I go around twice to make it a bit stronger so you don't get that whole floppy neck situation. You'll notice that this is fairly sturdy and um, on. So I'll show you how I sew on my head in just a second after I do all my stuffing, which is my least favorite part. I hate stuffing. <laughs> Be right back. All right, so I have stuffed the body, and at this point, I'm going to be using a darning needle. I am going to be using mostly just the tail, the uber long tail that I made for my body. And actually, my body's going to start this side, because I go from right to left. So my string is going to be on the rightmost side. I'm going to be essentially taking my tail here. And while I did fasten off, I also like to just take my tail and hide it real quick. I feed my tail through there. I go through the loop and I work it through the entire part of the body here. I mean the head here. And I kind of just pull my tail through that so that it's nice and firm. I can then cut my tail. There we go. I always kind of pull on it a little bit before I cut it. That way it'll go right back into the amigurumi head or body or wherever it is I'm sticking a tail. I've got it mostly stuffed. I do stuff a little bit while I'm sewing as well. So the way that I sew, and I'm gonna show as an example, I'm not gonna show the entire sewing process of me sewing all 24 stitches times two. So I'm going to line up my head so that it is straight and start working. The way that I do that is I'm going to put my head here and I'm going to put my stitch into whatever is across from it. So right there, that is that stitch. I'm gonna go from the front to the back of the very front part of this stitch. We are going to go through that and pull it so that it is tight. It is hard to show this. I'm going to just kind of show it in loose terms then. So the string came from here. So I'm going to go into the next stitch and I go through the center of the stitch on the body and then I go through to the back and then I pull it tight and I go up into the next stitch after what I just created. So I went through that stitch, so I'm gonna go through the outside to the inside. And I do this for as long as I can do while also tugging my tail gently the entire time. So I've got my next stitch, I went through that one, so I'm gonna go through, I didn't go through that one, excuse me. I would go through the next one from the center into the back pull and go through and then I went through this stitch right here so I'm going to go through the next one and I always like to double check and make sure that my eyes are going straight so if I get halfway through this and I realize that my eyes are kind of going cuckoo I will undo it I'll just 
untie it. Maybe it'll be easier if I do. Yeah, that's easier. There we go. It's hard to show this. So we're gonna go through the center and into the back. I'm trying not to split yarn and I'm also trying really hard not to pick up any kind of stuffing along the way. I tug after each go through. I'm gonna go through the front to the back, pull and tug, go through the middle and to the back. And you'll notice that as we go along, we are creating kind of a, all the front loops essentially are being left behind. Don't worry, when I go through around the second time, so as soon as this is closed and I reach back to my beginning, I go through those loops and then I go through the little parts here. I'll show what that looks like. I go through it that way on my second time around. If you don't particularly care if your neck is floppy or anything like that, then you don't have to do it this way. I just prefer doing it this way because I find that adding my pieces with an extra layer or going around a couple more times, the more you sew it, the sturdier your neck or your uh, added wherever it's gonna go. Same thing with your arm or anything like that. I'm gonna pull my tail a little bit there. Yeah, I'm gonna keep going. So I'll show you what it looks like as soon as I get to about here. I stuff as soon as I get about four stitches out and I make sure that it is all firm and all that and I'll show you how I go around the second time. Be right back. All right, so I have already stuffed a little bit just so that you don't have to watch me stuff the entire time. Um, I've gone all the way around and I'm trying to get this closed off. It's getting to the point where it's getting too big to really show. There we go. That was already shown. There we go. We're already gone through, not shown. I'm showing it now. And don't worry when you go around again. It'll close that up a little bit more, and as you tighten, it'll also close it up a bit more. This is where it starts to be a little bit of a pain in the butt, because I'm trying really hard not to get stuffing in it. But you know, getting somewhat successful results. Not always, though. Um, there we go. There's this one. Eek. I'm going to go through that. I'm going to make sure that I'm happy with how stuffed it is. I think it could go with a little tiny bit more. I'm gonna ball up just a small little ball, move my crochet hook out of the way, and shove him in there. And there we go. I don't know why I gendered it as he. I just did. I'm gonna go with a little tiny bit more. Keep whacking my tripod. There we go. So that's about right. I'm happy with that. Um, we're gonna go through, put that in there, make sure it's in, go through that. Ah! Don't hit the tripod. This is the final inside stitch right along here. Trying to, trying to avoid the stuffing all the while trying to get into that stitch. There you go. We did it. Did it, everybody. I'm gonna go through there. And now we're gonna pull on that and we're gonna go through the very first loop that we created. It's a tiny one at the very beginning. We're gonna go through it from the bottom to the top. And then I'm gonna also now go up above along the final round of, as I keep hitting my camera, along the final round of my head and go through it and pull up. We're gonna repeat that the entire way around, pulling it as we go and it'll kind of close things up. Go through the next stitch, pull and tighten. I just kind of tighten after every single pull and we're gonna keep doing that and then I hide my tail through the rest of the body. I'll show what that looks like towards the end. So I'm just gonna go through up and towards the head, then through the stitch of the final round of our head. 
pull tight and it kind of closes it up and you don't see any kind of line. It looks neater and your head is much more secure and less wobbly. You don't get the wobble neck that you usually get. It will happen over time the more that you play with the Samagurumi, but it'll happen the less. So I'm gonna keep going around. I went through him until I go hide my tail. I'll show you how I hide my tail and then I will show you the arms and those are super easy. And that will be it for this Amagurumi base. And then in future videos, I'll show you how to make other cute and adorable things using this body as a template. Be right back. All right, I've gone around and this is the final loop. So I'm gonna go up and into it. And then I'm going to go up above and just kind of stab my needle through the rest of the body. That way it'll kind of hide and pull. I'm gonna tug my tail to make sure that everything is nice and tight. I know this is not the most perfect way to do an amigurumi piece, but this is how I like doing my necks. That's what I personally like to do. And what I was explaining before is I like to pull on my tail and kind of get really close to it without getting too close to it. And then I cut. There we go. All right. So that is the head and the body together. We are nearly there. I feel like this one might have come out a little bit taller. Well, no, that's about the same size. Cool. My pattern is actually somewhat... Oh, you're standing on something, little dude. There you go. There we go. All right. So I'm going to get all this fluff off of my desk. And we're going to take the cream yarn. I have all of the cream yarn just hanging out. And we're going to create this arm. This arm is super easy. All we're doing is essentially the first two rounds of increases. We're going to go from six to 12 and then go around for 10 rounds. So do Super duper easy. There we go. I can say words. We're going to create a slip knot, like so. We're going to grab one of the five crochet hooks we have on our desk for some reason. And I'm going to put my slip knot on my hook. Go one, two, creating my magical ring the way that I do it. I'm going to place six inside. One, two, three, four. Five, this is close to my wrist, and six. I think that was six, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep. Pull the tail, and now we're going to increase every single one of these stitches. So if we can get into it, there we go. One and two. Go on to the next one. Three and four. I also wanted to show you how I do the belly buttons. I forgot about that five and six in the same stitch. So that's an increase. Seven and eight, nine and 10, 11 to 12. So now we have 12 stitches on our piece. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. I'm going to take my tail, I'm gonna pull it through, and now I'm just going to single crochet around for 10 rounds. I sew these onto the side, and then that's how I do my arms. It's super easy. I actually stuff my arms. So this is what it looks like after I've gone around for 10 times. I'm gonna put him right there. And I actually take a small ball. Where'd my, where'd all that fluff go? There we go. I take a small ball about this big. I make it into a ball as I shake my tripod and everything around it and then I put it right at the base of the hand kind of plop it in there and squish it that way it's kind of got a little bit of like a, a it's got a little bit of growth there and then I'm going to sew this along the final round of our body that we created so I'm going to put that right there I actually might take like a darning needle and kind of plop it on the side there while I sew it so that I can actually keep it accurately along there. So I am going to be basically repeating the same sewing stitch that I did on the outer part of our um, neck there. We're gonna just kind of go like that. I go in on the body through the 
this part into towards the head, I guess. Let me see if I can show this way. It's a little bit clearer. I can show things. There we go. I go through the body like so, where I want the other part of the head to show. Like where I want it to meet up on the arm. I'm going to go through from this angle towards the head and pull and just do this the entire way around. Go through body and up. Pulling kind of tight as I go so that I don't have to have too loose of a string. The tighter you pull it, the more seamless it looks against the body. We're gonna sew those on and then I'm actually going to create a um, French knot. There you can go there. French knot? I believe it's called a French knot. That's what my mom taught me. She showed me how to make these. They're actually pretty cute. I create a nice long tail. Eek. Actually, I'm gonna show how to, I'm gonna finish doing the arms real quick, sewing them on, getting it on there, and then I'll show you how I did the French knot. Beer back. All right, so I just sewed on the arms, and what I like doing for the French knot, and I double checked, it is definitely called a French knot, it is an embroidery term, is I'm gonna go through the back, right around where I want the belly button. I'm gonna push my darning needle through to wherever I want my darning needle, wherever I want my belly button to go. I'm gonna put it there, there you go. I'm gonna pull that through. Leave a little bit of a tail on this side so that I can go around it. And what I do for the French knot is I'm gonna wrap this. Move this cat fur again. My cat decided to lay on here again. Um, I'm gonna wrap this around my thumb three times. One, actually I'm gonna go a little bit higher on my thumb. There I go. That way I've got more to wrap around. Two and three. I'm gonna kind of take those loops Make sure that they are overlaid where I came out of originally. I'm going to take my darning needle and go down the center of it exactly where I want, but not quite where it originally came out of. So where I want my belly button to show up, I'm going to pull my tail. I'm going to pull it so that all of those get tight, like so. And again, <laughs> remove my cat from laying on this. There we go. I'm going to then take my darning needle and pull it, push it back through the back side like so and pull that through. So that's going to create a little tiny belly button, which I think is adorable and I like. And it was just a quick little addition. If you liked that kind of thing, I'm gonna pull, but not too tight, because if you pull it too tight, then it gets a little weird on the um, belly button. It can make it look just kind of bizarre. I like how that looks. I think it's super cute. And this is basically all there is to this video. I wanted to show how to do a French knot real quick. I might do an actual super step-by-step -step tutorial for that if you wanna just do that as well. Um, so that's pretty much all there is to this video. I'm going to be taking this and, like I said at the very beginning, doing a bunny and doing a bear. I might do other animals and put some suggestions down in the comments if you're interested in those. What do you think this guy should actually be? Do you think he should be a guy? Do you think he should be a girl? Should I make her a wig? Should I make him a wig? Should I put some clothes on them? I'm pretty sure that, well, it's the same body size, so uh, all the Luna Mama clothes that I have made will fit on them. So I have those on my Ravelry. If you're interested in those, I can also do some tutorials on how to make those. So uh, this is a bit of a rambling video and I apologize for that, but it's been, it's been a week. So I'm gonna ramble, but all right. Until next time, guys, bye.